Okay, hello and welcome to our uh, Thermomix cooking class today. We're going to be featuring the TM6 and I just want to show you a few of the features of the TM6 as we go along um, and just how useful the Thermomix is. So the Thermomix is great for families who are wanting to save time in the kitchen or be healthier, perhaps save money and just be more creative and produce amazing food. So it's kind of suits lots of different households it's just that everyone uses it differently so um, you might be thinking now what you love about your thermomix if you've got one or what you would love if you had one um, so yeah we're going to get started very quickly one thing I just want to let you know is if you could please stay on mute while we go so that everyone can hear the presenter but at the end there's going to be time for you to come off and ask other questions in the meantime if you have questions about anything please feel free to put it in the chat box and we'll do our best to answer those questions um, also this meeting is being recorded um, so that those who can't make it today I've had a few messages from people who were looking forward to it who will catch up on the recording um, for whatever reason so that's why I'm recording that. It's not, um, yeah, really any other reason. Um, so we will just get started. And here we have our Thermomix here. I'm going to show you a few different modes. I'm going to pull the camera a bit closer so you can see my screen. This is the home screen when you first turn on the Thermomix so that you can, if you're cooking manually, you can set the time, the temperature, um, or the speed. And there's, 20 different speed options you can choose. If we swipe this way, it brings us into cookie do where we can type something we wanna cook and the recipe will come up. And it's always a little bit slower when I'm on Zoom, but that's okay. Um, you can see recipes have come up, but if I just type in a random word, I'm going to show you more about this a bit later, but I just, just really basically, you can type in a word and the recipes come up and it guides you through how to make it. So that's the cookie do side. If we swipe the other way, here are all the different functions of what the Thermomix TM6 model can do. And we're going to show you some of these today, um, but we can't show you everything because it would take too long. Um, but yeah, we've got our scales and dough mode, um, which we're going to use turbo, a self clean mode, blend, egg boiler, kettle, reheat, Thicken, which we'll use rice cooker. We're going to show you um, ferment to make yogurt and things like that. Um, we also have slow cook sous vide and our peeler mode, which um, is the newest addition we have. And as you get software updates, more modes come on the Thermomix. And that's what we love about it as well. But to get started today um, on the recipes, and we'll show you more about the Thermomix as we go along. But to get started, I'm going to start the first recipe, which I've planned to make which is pizza Bianca. And the reason I've chosen to make this recipe and I need to preheat the oven, so give me two sec. So sorry about that. Um, the reason I wanted to show you um, pizza Bianca is to show you the dough mode. It's so good. It does such a great job on breads, um, but it shows you other features of the Thermomix as we go along. So um, guided cooking is one of the awesome things on the TM6 where you can just type in a recipe or have it in your weekly planner. If you scroll down, you can see the info about the recipe, including your ingredients, steps, a nutrition guide, and any hints and tricks or substitutes the recipe may have. Or if you're ready to go, you just press start. So yeah, I've preheated the oven so I can just press next. I've got my baking tray ready. And so now I'm going to place in two cloves of garlic and some rosemary, which I'm just going to strip and put in the bowl. Now, if you, you can substitute any herbs and if you're just making a normal pizza dough, you would skip the, there's another recipe for just normal pizza dough that doesn't have the garlic and herbs. It tells you when to put the lid on. And now, as soon as I turn the speed, you'll see these arms close and we're going to be chopping the garlic and the herbs for four seconds. It says to press next and give it a little scrape down with our spatula show you what we have here it's pretty nicely chopped um, I like it just the way it is right now but in the recipe it asks us to chop it again 
I guess they just want it to be really fine. So I will follow the recipe today, but normally I would probably skip through. Another few seconds of chopping. So now it's telling me to transfer into a bowl and set aside. That's going to be the topping for our pizza. So, and it smells really good. We'll just get that out of the bowl. So you can see now how finely you can chop up even just a small amount of herbs and garlic, herbs or garlic. You can do a larger amount as well. Another thing I love to do in the Thermomix is chop onions, which only takes a few seconds. I'm going to not stress too much about getting it all out because this, whatever's left in here will just be in the dough. But I've got a good amount here. And the reason I'll just show you in the bowl, we have, it's one sheet of high grade stainless steel bowl, um, stainless steel that goes all the way around. The blades are Solingen steel and each of the blades are is at a different height so that it processes the food really nicely. And we have these four ridges around which help push the food back down as the blades sort of move it out. The ridges kind of help it move back down when needed. And that's why you can chop just even one clove of garlic, um, you know, normal in a normal blender or whatever, it would just kind of dance around a bit, but this can process small amounts and really large amounts. So it's great. Okay, adding in our water. And please, if anyone has any questions anytime, just feel free to put it in the chat as well. So just pouring in the water. Oh, and I should show you. I'll just come a bit closer. As I add the water, it's telling me 220 over here, but this is the real time scale. So as I add the water at the top, I can be watching to make sure I add the right amount. So no need to use measure cups, which is really handy. Uh, add in, I skip the sugar because that's just me. You can add that if you want to. Um, I actually think that because the Thermomix activates the yeast at 37 degrees, the sugar isn't really needed, whereas it, it kind of is in a lot of other traditional recipes. So I've just added two teaspoons of yeast and I get this brand. This one's um, kind of cheap and I keep it in my freezer. And even frozen, it's still scoopable. I don't know if you can see that. Scoopable, pourable, everything. So it just stays active. And this, as you can see, is going to be heating now for two minutes at 37 degrees on just a low stirring speed. So that 37 degrees is a really good temperature for activating yeast or fermenting that type of thing because it's live and that's it's scientific for some reason. Um, but it's it's actually your body temperature as well. So it's kind of seems to be the live temperature to use for these types of things. But you don't really need to know why or even know that because all the recipes are built in and it just does it. So um, that time and temperature was already preset and all it asked me to do was turn the dial to speed one and it's going. So you don't actually need to know. But I wanna show you something else about when you're using guided cooking on the Thermomix, which has thousands of recipes. When you're in the middle of a recipe and it's doing something like this, if you want to multitask and look ahead, press these three dots and you can either preview the next step, um, which tells you what to do, or you can open the whole recipe so that you can really look ahead and go to your pantry or your fridge and get out all these ingredients. You can also open the scales. So I could be here with a random bowl, I could just put that on top there, have my scales on and I could be pre-weighing my next ingredients if I wanted to do that. Um, yeah, so that's, I love being able to do that so that I can um, look ahead and get really organized. So, cause otherwise you kind of, cause you're not having to do anything. You can just be standing around doing nothing, but um, I really like these pockets of time to get organized. And then when it's a longer period, you can leave the kitchen. You can even leave the house while your Thermomix is going. The only two times you can't really is um, if you're kneading dough because, and I'll show you what that looks like when you're kneading dough in a minute. 
um, that's one time you need to stay kind of close by. Or if you're blending something hot or even just normal blending, you're not really going to go far. Okay, so it is asking me to add some flour. And it, the recipe asks for baker's flour. If you have plain flour, your recipe is still kind of going to work and it's, it's probably going to be fine. It, it's, I've done it a few times and it, it works. It's not as good. Baker's flour has more protein, more gluten. Um, it's actually, it's still, um, it's still wheat, you know, that's been processed into flour, but it's grown at a different altitude so that it, it gives a different um, textured result. So plain flour is really good for your biscuits and cakes and whatever, but baker's flour is better for any bread product. So if you can get baker's flour, it's definitely going to get you a better result. But if all you have is plain flour, still give it a go and make your bread or your pizza because it's still going to be really good. It's going to be great. So it's asking us to put in olive oil. And one thing I love about these TM6 scales um, as opposed to other models is when I go to drizzle in this oil, um, it goes in one gram increments. So I can actually be really accurate about how much is going in. Um, and it even detects really lightly drizzled things or, you know, whatever. Oh, yeah, 30 grams of olive oil. Bit of salt. Now I just use, um, I actually try, it's, it's not in everything I do, but I try and cut out additives where I can for the family. If it's easy, it's great. So I actually buy rock salt. I buy the Himalayan rock salt, um, but any rock salt, and mill it myself in the Thermomix. It only takes 10 seconds to do, and then I've got cooking salt ready to go that's already milled that I know has no anti-caking agents or, you know, any kind of additives that the store-bought cooking salt is going to have in it. So just an idea for you if you're wanting to mill things as well. Um, I find that really good where I can. <laughs> Okay, it's telling me to put the lid on and now I am kneading this dough. So you'll see in a second, it might start moving around a bit, but hopefully you can hear me. While you're kneading dough that, yeah, it can move around a bit. And I'll just show you what it looks like on the inside. Depending on what you're doing, you can take the measure cup off and have a look inside. I don't know if you can see that. But yeah, it's just, sorry if that gave you motion sickness. Um, it's just really spinning that dough around in there. So two minutes of kneading in your Thermomix is the same as 20 minutes of hand punching. And it seems to be much quicker than a bread maker. So yeah, that will give us a good strong dough. More and we'll be ready to set it aside. So I'm going to be wrapping the dough in this thermo mat. The thermo mat is um, it's made from silicon and on the inside is fiberglass to help trap in the heat. So we don't cut on our mats. We need to keep it very much intact so that it's food safe. Um, so if you're wanting to cut on the mat, use your spatula um, to cut whatever you want to do. So I'm going to use that to wrap my dough in so it traps in the heat and rises really quickly and nicely. Um, other things, other people use this for uh, to make pastries or biscuits or whatever. Something you need to roll out the dough for. This is really great because it's non-stick. You can also bake on this in the oven up to 200, no, it's 280 degrees, um, sorry. Um, yeah, so the, the mat is really useful to have. You can get the mat by um, hosting some friends, showing them how the Thermomix works at a cooking experience, um, or they're available to purchase on the mix shop as well. But there's our dough in two minutes. When you're wanting to get the dough out of the bowl, Underneath, you've got this blade piece here. If you just give it a spin. You see, I need to give my bowl a bit of a clean underneath. And so that's all just popped out really nicely. 
Um, and I've got now this beautiful dough, which is, I don't know if you can even see how beautiful it is, but that's before rising. So it's going to be even nicer once it's risen. So I would ordinarily rise this for like even up to an hour. Yeah. But we're going to do, I'm just going to do, for, for today's sake, I won't do that long. I'll do about 15 minutes and then get it in the oven because um, we want to finish this class on time. So wrapped in the mat, I will set it aside somewhere warm so that it um, just rises while we move on to other things. So um, let's move to Fidesz for the moment because she's got another great dish she wants to share with you all. And I'll let her introduce herself. Hello, everyone. Um, my name is Fidesz and I'm also a consultant um, from Laura's team. So today I'll be making the lem Vietnamese lemongrass pork strips. So basically it's just like a quick stir fry of um, pork strips. And it uses the high heat function of um, the PM6, but we're going to do it through cookie dough. So it's also going to show you what other ingredients to put in and up to um, what step. Um, Laura has already showed you a little bit earlier about cookie dough and I'm just going to do the same. So um, for, the, for the recipe for the pork strips, I have already added that to um, what I'll be cooking today. So using my phone, because cookie dough is also um, like an app in your phone. I can just search whatever um, I want to cook like when I'm away or like in the sofa or like in the bedroom. And I'll just um, set like cook today from here, whatever I want to cook or meal plan. And um, when I go to my Thermomix, I'll just bring it up and then I can just start cooking straight away. So I'll do that. And yeah, we'll just start cooking. So the first thing is you need to measure the, the pork strips. I've already done that earlier. I pre-measured it all. And added, um, so it's asking for pork shoulder, but I'm actually using pork neck because I find like pork neck has um, a little bit of fat in it, which, which adds like more flavor to your stir fry and also um, softer um, in terms of texture. So um, pork shoulder cut into, or pork neck cut, cut into thin strips. I've added um, salt, I've added ground black pepper, and I've just set this aside like earlier, like 30 minutes earlier. So we have to pat it dry with the kitchen towel. I'll be doing that in a while. But we, meanwhile, um, we need to start um, cooking the aromats. So um, we need to put 20 grams of the cooking oil. Uh, two garlic cloves or more, if you like it, like more garlic taste. There you go. And stock of fresh lemongrass, so um, cut thin slices. So what I'm actually using is just the white part of um, the lemongrass stock. Um, but for here, I just use like about half. So sometimes, sorry, I'll just grab it. So sometimes in the groceries, like in Woolies, you can just get like, um, this one, or you can get the longer lemongrass stack, stock. So just use the white part if you're using it because the, the green part is a little bit more fib fibrous, so it's not very nice uh, when you're eating. So lemongrass. In bowl. And then just quickly, for two and a half minutes, just heating up and um, getting flavor out of the garlic and the lemongrass. So that's um, gonna go on for about two minutes. And while it's doing that, I'll just grab some um, kitchen towel. It's, it's pretty dry. 
but I'll just make sure there's no more moisture left. So it's better when you're um, browning in the thermomix. Yeah, it's all right. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Get back in here, it's jumping. Yeah, I also don't want to get all of the salt that I've added in, so I'm not gonna pat it so much. I'll just go and quickly wash my hands. So I've cut it like um, this long. If you can see that, um, yeah, and it's it's important that it's even, almost even sized. So for this one, I guess you can put it in um, like sandwiches, like banh mi with some pickled vegetables, or just um, like put it as a rice top rice topping with some vegetables as well. So there's a few other um, high heat recipes that are there in um, cookie dough, like um, stir fried eggplant, or which you can have have it with um, this one as well if you like to add more for veggies to your um, cooking. So yep, just a little bit more. I'm starting to smell um, the lemongrass and the garlic. It's really fragrant. I've actually adjusted the lemongrass to just use half of that um, stock. But if you prefer like more uh, fragrant, more flavor, you can use the whole thing. So that's um, just stir fried for a bit. And the next step would be to add the marinated pork strips making sure that it's evenly distributed in the bowl for even um, cooking. And for, um, usually when you're using the high heat function, you would need to have um, this splash guard to, pre to prevent it from um, splattering. So it doesn't cover the hole, so um, the moisture can actually escape and it doesn't stew inside in the bowl. So um, that's why you need this one. But there's like holes, so yeah, the air can escape. So done. So um, if you notice like the mode becomes like three squiggly lines. That's kind of like the icon or the drawing that you know that you're in the, the high heat mode. So this is just gonna go on for seven minutes. Um, it's not gonna be, the blades are not going to be like turning the whole way through because it needs to have um, that time, amount of time for the meat to be in contact with the underside of your bowl to, um, to, to do some browning. So um, yeah, that's it. I'm not sure if you can hear it right now, but it's actually starting to sizzle um, because of the high heat. So I'll just leave it there. And I think Laura, do you need to um, show something again? All right. My next recipe, that high heat mode is so good for browning, caramelizing onions, making honeycomb and all sorts of great things. It goes up to 160 degrees. But I want to show you um, the thicken mode now on the Thermomix, which um, it's really simple, but it's actually so good. So thicken mode is good because it detects, you know, the texture of your ingredients and just cooks for the right amount to get the texture you want rather than you setting in a time, which is what the normal recipes do. You know, for a custard, it might, in the past, it usually might have said, you know, eight minutes on 90 degrees speed four. But now we just press thicken mode and it just kind of detects because eggs are different, temperature and um, freshness of milks and creams are different each time. So the thicken mode is really um, helpful. So it's good for gravy, hollandaise, bechamel, 
um, you know, all sorts of sources, lemon curd, those types of things. So um, I do want to show you a few different ways of finding recipes to cook on your Thermomix. The easiest way is this way, where you just come and type in what you want. I love that way. And that's what we mostly do. But if you're back home, another thing you can do is access recipes in your menu. So you might have recipes organized in folders. So I have got some folders that I've created here. But today I've actually put custard in my weekly planner. So I knew I was going to make it for, your, for this class today. So I've put it in here. And then, you know, I've got tomorrow's dish there as well. So you come in and you're ready to go. So we'll just press start and we'll quit the pizza. So oh, one thing to say, there are so many custard recipes on Cookie Do. This is my favorite general custard recipe and it's actually for lemon custard. So if you, and in the tips, you can read about it, but it says skip the lemon and add vanilla if you want normal vanilla custard or skip the lemon and add cocoa if you want that. So that's what I'm doing today. I'm going to skip the first step. Um, press the button but I will add the sugar. So I find that 60 grams of sugar is enough, but it, with all recipes, I think it's good to just try it, um, try it once and see how you like it. And if you need to change, I, I went too far. If you need to change it next time, you know how your family likes it. So yeah, and I don't need to mill that because we're not doing lemon. So now I'll just add the rest of the ingredients. Oh, I need corn flour. I'm not going to have enough in here, I don't think. Hmm, I need to, might need to scrape this out. My corn flour is empty. I'll just get as much as I can. Sorry about that. I was organized with all the other ingredients. Um, I'm actually going to just add a little bit of normal flour here. So corn flour is definitely important if you need it to be gluten-free, but if you don't, it's okay to use normal flour. I would just normally use um, maybe a little bit more. Um, so instead of just 30, I'll I'll just do maybe up to 40 because it, it is a bit different. And that's okay. It's still going to be a great custard. So, and we'll add our eggs, just normal eggs there. And, um, oops, sorry. Milk. So if you want it to be dairy free, you can use coconut milk or rice or almond milk or anything. Um, whatever milk you choose is going to work in the custard. Okay. I think that's the last ingredient it asks for, but we need to remember to add the cocoa. So it's in the, I know what I'm doing, but I just want to show you in case you don't. If I go to the recipe detail and go to the very bottom, here's where it has the variations. So you can add 20 to 40 grams of cocoa. And to do that, you can just come here and press the scales. And I'm adding cacao powder today. Obviously you can use cocoa. You can also just add um, cooking chocolate if you'd rather, it's a little bit richer to add the chocolate rather than cocoa. Um, but yeah, I'll just drizzle some of this in. That's probably a good amount. And now we go back to the recipe. So even though we're following a guided cooking recipe, if you know what you're doing in the kitchen or wanna make substitutions or do anything like that, you still can override what the recipe wants you to do. I'm a family of six here in our house. So we often bulk up a lot of the recipes and that's fine to do. You're still following the guide, but adding in whatever ingredients you want to do. Or if there's something that asks for chili or whatever, you can skip it if you don't like it. So yeah. Good.
Another thing I love about the TM6 lid is that the measure cup is stuck in place. So it doesn't go wandering. So now on the screen, it's, it hasn't given me a time because that's what I talked about earlier where it's going to be a variable time. It's just given me a temperature and a mode. So that mode changes speed throughout the process. It's going to heat up and stir on a low speed first. And then as it's reached temperature and is kind of ready to start thickening, it's going to change speed to be a bit higher. And that's one of the other great things I love about the TM6 modes. A lot of them do this where they change speeds to suit where you're at in a recipe. And you don't need to be in the kitchen stirring and looking and going, oh yeah, now it's ready to turn it up. It's just the mode does it. You can leave the house and it's going to work out awesome. So yeah, so that's thicken mode. And I'll show you the custard when it comes out. Is Fidesz ready for us? You are, okay. And then we'll come back and shape the dough in a minute. All right, so this just finished. Um, we still need to do um, some, to add a few more things in this, but I just want to show you first um, what it looks like after it's um, stir fried a bit. Um, so some oil has actually come out of um, the pork. I'm not sure if you can see that. It's um, underneath um, there, but it's, this one is smelling um, really, really, really good already. Um, so there's like the lemongrass and the garlic and the pork smell. So we'll continue. It needs to be transferred to a bowl and set aside. And after that, I'm not gonna clean the bowl because there's a lot of, it, it asks you to clean the bowl from the step. So I'm not gonna do that anymore because there's a lot of flavor that's actually here in the bottom. So I'll just continue to, um, follow the, the next step. So putting that aside, click next, I think I skipped one. Um, one teaspoon water. All right, that's not much. Light soy sauce. A teaspoon. Yep. A teaspoon of fish sauce. And what else? Yep, just a quarter teaspoon of the dark soy. And sugar, just a teaspoon. And needs to cook this for about a minute. All right. So earlier I've actually already um, made the rice using the rice cooker mode. So I, I'm not able to show you how it cooks, but I already have the finished um, product here. So it can go with the pork strips. So with, with the rice in the Thermomix, we, we, we can actually do it um, two ways. So one is using the simmer basket me method where you, um, Put the rice in the simmer basket, um, you rinse it until it's clear, and you add enough water. Oh, um, Kaylee, is, uh, it's um, Vietnamese lemongrass pork strips, I think. I'll, I'll send um, a link. I think, Laura, Vietnamese lemongrass pork strips. It's um, this one in Cookie Do. Oh, sorry. But Laura will be sending, I think, a list of, of the recipes that we're doing today as well. So with the rice, you can cook it here. 
but the problem with this one is um it's not enough um especially for us there's like five of us and uh like we're we're, we're really rice eaters so if you needed to cook more um the the rice cooker mode in the TM TM6 is actually great as well. So um, you can put up the recipe for rice cooker um, and then just have a ratio of I think one one ratio of rice to I think like around two uh, parts of water and then you just set the rice cooker mode and it will um, just cook as long until it. It, it like the thicken, like the custard, it will just detect whenever the, the rice is cooked or, or not. So you don't have to remember like time or whatever. So this is done. You add to the pork strips. So it's just a very, very small sauce. Right there and just add like your your lime juice and um bird's eye chili it's actually asking for bird's eye chili but i know that's um actually very spicy so if you prefer it mild you can just put in like what i'm doing just the long um red chili um in there and if you actually prefer it milder you can take out the seeds as well so just put in there um with um the lime and you're done that's it put it on your rice and you have like lunch or dinner sorted all right so should we go back to laura or yes um, right. hopefully you can hear me is that okay is, or is my demo mix too loud okay hopefully you can hear me okay um, because the thicken mode is loud, but I want to show you now shaping the pizza dough. So that's been rising, um, you know, a little while. And as I said, normally I would rise it longer, but it's a really nice, soft, beautiful texture ready to make the pizza dough. And I am going to get two out of that. And if I used a rolling pin and rolled it quite thin, and actually rose it longer. I can get three bases out of that, but I'm just going to do two today. And I'm gonna make it rustic style with my hands um, rather than doing the rolling pin, which is what I would probably do for a normal pizza, but pizza Bianca is more like a garlic bread and it's kind of, it looks cool when it's rustic. So I'll just kind of shape it out a bit. I don't know if you can even see what I'm doing. The guide on the mat is helpful to make it round. Okay, that looks pretty good. I'm going to use the rose gold pizza tray. And you don't need to grease the rose gold bakeware. It just, um, it's available from the mix shop. It just is non-stick. It's really nice. Sorry. Okay, so I'll take my rosemary and garlic, sprinkle that around. And then what the recipe says is to drizzle some oil on it as well. I'm using the oil spray that you can get from the mix shop because I think it's really great just to be really even. Um, it does a nice job of spraying and I'll, I'll be very generous with it. Okay, so that looks good. And then some salt over the top. That's ready to go in the oven about 15 minutes, um, depending on the oven. I've made it pretty hot. I've heated it up to 220. So I'll pop that in the oven. Um, so Des, are you ready for me again or you want me to keep talking? Okay, I'll keep talking. Just let me put this back. Oh. No. <laughs> I'll put this back in the oven. I'll come back. Okay.
So I'll just gonna plate this up. Okay, you can. I'll, I'm just plating this up so um, you can um, take over whenever you want like because I'll I'll just plate this up and then later I can just quickly show the um, hot chocolate. Sorry, we're like switching back between the two of us to make sure we show you everything. Um, so it just has a minute to go. I feel like it's so loud, but um, it's not that loud normally. It's just because I'm on a Zoom class, so hoping you can hear me. Um, the other thing I wanted to show you in the meantime is earlier I showed you a mode on the TM6. It said blade, uh, it said peel up. I wanted to show you, this is an optional extra and not every Thermomix user will want this, but you can get this and it's a blade cover peeler and it's stainless steel and the grooves are actually really soft. So you can use this when you're doing slow cook mode or sous vide mode um, in your Thermomix. So it, it basically, if I show you, it sits on top of the blades so that if you're wanting to slow cook something where you don't want it to be in contact with the blades, this just kind of acts as a barrier and you've got everything on top, like meatballs or um, ribs, or I don't know, I can't even think what else, but so this type slow cook into your Thermomix, uh, into the cookie do search bar and so many recipes come up. Um, you can also use it for sous vide. So, you know, you fill up this with water and put your plastic bags in there and they're not going to be broken apart by the blades. So that's also really great for that. But the other use for this is to peel potatoes. So you can put in your potatoes up to 800 grams or other root veggies. So I've done beetroot, um, what else have I done? Carrots, uh, sweet potato, you know, those types of things. You put it in with water and press the peeler mode and at the end, your veggies, your whatever you've put in is peeled and you just tip out the water down the sink. And the peel is, it's so fine because it's been peeled so gently that um, you're not actually left with any mess. It just, you can put it down the sink or pour it into your garden or compost or wherever you need to pour your peelings. But um, yeah, it's really, it's really cool. So that's that accessory. When you hear people talking about the blade cover or the blade cover peeler, that's what that is. So I just wanted to share that. So the custard's ready. It's so good. Um, it smells really good actually. And I will just, I don't know if you can even see that. Oh, it's just a beautiful chocolate custard texture. Hopefully you can see that. So now if you wanted it to be runny, runnier, you do less flour. And if you wanted it to be thicker, you could do an extra egg or do more flour. There's also recipes for creme patissier or creme anglaise. So all the re custard recipes are different, but basically there's our beautiful chocolate custard ready to go. The kids will love that. And, you know, additive free, healthy version of custard um, that has cost me like next to nothing to make compared to buying, um, you know, chocolate yoga or, or chocolate custard or whatever it is that um, you can buy. But that's the chocolate custard and or you could do vanilla or lemon or orange or choc orange or whatever other flavor you want to do so all right i will hand you back to fides i think yep okay. Am I on mute? Yeah. all right all good so um this one's done Ta -da! and then i'm gonna show you just quickly how to um make um hot chocolate another chocolate um dish for the kids but this is um very very quick and um my kids can make them um this recipe even when they're sleeping because it's um it's very easy to remember it it uses just the kettle kettle mode and um turbo so um even if you have to adjust the recipe like for two people for four people um, the steps and the procedure stays the same because we're using the modes and it's going to stop when it thinks it reached the, the state that you need it to be. So for hot chocolate, it's, it's very simple. Or any milk that you like, um, non-dairy, 
um, whatever, and um, uh, a good tasting chocolate that you like the taste. So, so these ones, um, I get these from Costco. They're um, they're supposed to be expensive, but with Costco, they're 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 cheaper. So this is like Calibo um, dark chocolate. So uh, what we do is we just put like any amount of milk that we need on the bowl. Like we do around like 500 grams, 600 grams of milk, and then about like 80 grams of chocolate, but you can adjust according to your preference. Like if you want it like um, less sweet or less chocolatey, um, it's, it's flexible. So um, yeah, so I'll just add, let me measure so I don't put too much. Oh, I did put too much. Oh, that's fine, hundred. All right. And then, so what we do first is we set to kettle. And with the kettle mode, I'm not sure if you can see. With the kettle mode, you just have to select um, what temperature you want it to be. And then it will stop once it reaches the temperature. So you don't have to think and adjust. Like if I added in like 600 grams of milk, how long do I have to set the time before it reaches the temperature? Because this one will just stop. So whether you're cooking for one or for four, um, the settings are gonna be the same. So I set it to 75, press the kettle. I will just tell me when it's done. Um, heating up the milk. So I added, I, I just said 75 because I feel like it's not, it's the right temperature for chocolate, but kids don't want it too hot, but I mean, it's flexible. You can adjust it to however um, temperature you like. So this is, I'm not gonna, I think it's gonna go on for like a minute or like two minutes to three minutes. So while that's going, I'll hand you over to Laura first. While we're waiting for this one. That's great. Thank you so much. I wanted to show you. Um, oh, um, sorry, I should have had it ready. Um, the current promotion for anyone who's interested in purchasing a Thermomix TM6 is that coming free with it is our mini handheld vacuum, which is normally $299. So if you're looking at purchasing a Thermomix or if you have a friend who is, you should let them know um, because this is such a great deal. So Cobalt is um, made by Forwerk, which is the same maker as the Thermomix. That's why it kind of looks pretty similar. And this is so powerful. And you can see how small and lightweight it is. It just zips around. I do it in like the drawers and in my car and just around. Um, and it has two powers. So once you turn it on, like that, and if you hold it down, it becomes even more powerful just from holding down the button so um and i i think this is really powerful but also just so small to get into little nooks and crannies so that's coming free at the moment for anyone purchasing a tm6 so i think that is just really awesome oh and it goes oh i should have looked that up i think it's 12 minutes without having to charge it so it's, it's like quite a good um charge but because well i keep mine in my kitchen there but you can obviously put it wherever you want but handy for the kids I have four kids and you know they know that if they make a spill they can just grab this and clean it up without needing to make a fuss about it basically so that's the um cobalt handheld back we do have another promotion on at the moment which we're calling pair and save which I'm going to look up just to make sure I think I know what it is but I really want to make sure is that um yeah, it is. So for three, that normally the price of the Thermomix is two thousand three hundred and fifty nine dollars, um, and we have really great payment options which are super affordable. But at the moment, you can get not only that free with it, but also if you want to upgrade, we call it pair and save, to our other back. This back here. I don't know if you can see it. It's also really lightweight. It's cordless, so you can glide around the house, um, just kind of vacuum around. Um, and you can also add on a mop head. So you can vacuum and mop at the same time without being encumbered by cords and cables. 
who knew I'd ever be advertising vacuums. But um, this thing is actually really awesome. Another thing that anyone in the house can just grab and go because it's so light and easy to grab and it has a really good battery charge as well. So with the Thermomix, the mini vac, the big vac and the mop head, you can get all that for 3,999, which is a saving of $658 normally. So if you're wanting to just revamp your whole household, you can do that at the moment. And if you already have, if this isn't deal isn't for you, make sure you let your friends know because it is actually a really good deal um, just for anyone as well. So um, yeah, so that's the current promotion. Actually, I need to tell you one other thing while well, Fidesz's hot chocolate is cooking. Um, is that at the moment we have 36 months interest free on as a deal. So for as little as $16.83 per week, you can have a Thermomix on your bench. So, um, you know, super affordable. And for those who have a Thermomix, you know, you're not going to miss, you know, $17 out of your bank account when you've got a Thermomix on your bench because it's just so awesome and you can save money with it and, you know, time and health and all the great things that a Thermomix can benefit you with. So um definitely spread the word about that one as well um yeah so i do want to show you cookie do but i'm conscious that the hot chocolate might be ready soon is that right oh she's ready okay we're gonna move over and then we'll i i want to show you sorry cookie <laughs> that's okay i want to show you cookie do 3.0 because it um and the pizza will be ready too soon because I can show you how you can put your own recipes onto the Thermomix screen, which is awesome. Thanks, Fides. All right, so when it's done, um, what I do just to fraud it up a bit is just quickly do a blend mode and, and 7.5 speed. So like 75 degrees, 7.5 speed. That's why I tell the kids to just remember. So um, just for 30 seconds to frot up the, the chocolate in the milk um, a bit. All right, so I've turned on the time a bit. You can actually do it like shorter, like 15 seconds, that should be fine. And then you'll have the like frothy, frothy um, hot chocolate, like cafe style or whatever. And um, yeah, there you go. Quick and easy. Ta -da! <laughs> I'm done. <laughs> I want to show you. Oh, I better show you the pizza because while that hot chocolate was done, this was ready. You can see here beautifully cooked um, pizza Bianca, which is basically a garlic bread, which you can cut up. It's great on its own or dipped into a soup or just alongside of anything, really. And you can see where it's, um, I don't know if you can see where it's popped up and um, where it's thinner um, just to make it more rustic. So that's beautiful. Um, but yeah, I want to show you Cookie Do 3.0 because it's really exciting. Um, so I'm going to share screen. And please, if anyone has any questions, just come off mute and that's fine. Or put in the chat as you have been. So on Cookie Do, which is also on your um, computer, app on the phone, or um, on the actual TM6 screen itself. I better accept those cookies. Okay. So here's, as you can see, this looks the same as it does on the screen. So if you come here and just want to type something in like the Vietnamese pork, um, there it is, Vietnamese lemongrass pork strips or whatever else you're wanting to find. Some other great recipes just came up just then too. Um, if you want to organize the recipe that you've looked for, you can press the three dots here and you can either bookmark it, cook today, add to a collection. There are your folders. Um, oh, what happened? Yeah, there they are. Um, so these are folders that you've created yourself um, just to be organized, or you can put it in your weekly planner and choose which date you're going to be cooking that recipe. 
And the last thing you need to do if you're going to be cooking it is add all those ingredients to your shopping list. And how the search works is if you know what you're cooking, you can type that in. But if you don't know what you're making, you can just type in anything. Like say you want to cook something that has apple in it. You can just type in the word apple and all the recipes come up. But if you don't even know what you want to make, but you want to make something, you know, you could type in the word breakfast or type in the word um, Valentine's. Um, you know, every recipe has tags. So if I show you an example, um, let's go into this trifle and go down the bottom. It has tags. So these are basically examples of the types of words you can type into the search bar to get up some recipes um, that suit that tag, like cooking for a large family. This is the type of tag that I like to use. Um, and so you can find those recipes that serve more people than usual, you know. Um, so that's the search bar and that's how you organize recipes. So I, I will just show you that weekly planner and shopping list. This is awesome. When you come in here and you have a shopping list, you can go to show ingredients and that way, you know, being organized with a meal planner and shopping list means you're going to have less waste and you're going to save money because you're only buying what you need. Um, but also it's just really handy. So as you're shopping, all the ingredients you need are categorized into dairy or fruit or meat or spices, whatever it is. So that as you're going down the shopping aisles, you can, you know, just be organized and put, as you put the ingredient in, you can tick it off because you can have this open on the app on your phone. Um, before you go shopping, tick off anything you've already got at home. So, you know, I've already got garlic so I'll just tick that off and I've got ginger so yeah just get organized if you want to add any other ingredients like um paper towel or soap or shampoo or whatever you need to add that's not in your recipes you can add that there but the other great thing about this shopping list if you don't want to do shopping yourself is you can share this list with someone else from the household or order the ingredients and when you press the order button it takes you through to the Woolworths online um, site kind of the first step is to choose your brands so it's going to detect what brand it thinks you might want but you can come in here and change that so if you don't like a particular brand you just press the swap button and you choose the one you want and whatever it is and you, you do that until you're ready with everything and once you're ready you can just add it to your cart and go about your online shop so that you can do a click and collect or a home delivery so I think that is really awesome. I love, love, love that feature of Cookie Do. Um, but the next feature I want to show you is created recipes. So when you come into my recipes up the top, there's a folder here called created recipes. And basically these are recipes that you create and put into Cookie Do so that you can have guided cooking. So this is, you know, my family's spaghetti recipe and that's my daughter holding the spaghetti that she made. Um, some that salmon risotto is my recipe that I made up. Um, I also, oh no, I, that was kind of a hybrid. So these are kind of hybrid recipes or the other ones I've got are from recipecommunity.com.au and you import it in, you can edit it to be the way you want it and then put it on your Thermomix screen. So um, the way you um, add a recipe is just press create. Um, you know, just whatever it is. You can upload an image. I won't really go into it now because we have dedicated cookie do tutorials that you can um, look into as well. But you add your ingredients, you add your steps and you press done. And it's actually really quick. It's really easy process. But, and then, um, and there's also here on the side, I will just show you before I stop that share. When you press created recipes and you're on the side, there's video tutorials on how to do it as well. Or, you know, you can contact me or your consultant anytime and we can go over it as well. I'm just conscious that it's already 1.30 and I wanted this to be a lunchtime hours long class. Um, but I do want to just show you on the Thermomix screen, those created recipes, if I come in here and go to my recipes, they're right here. Just need to give it a second. Um, and while that loads, I actually need to get this. I had to get the other pizza on the other because I made two. Um, yeah, so these are the recipes. So when you go into one, and I've this is one I've imported from Recipe Community. 
Um, I'll just I'll show you my daughter's one. This is our family's age old spaghetti bolognese recipe. And we just love how now it can be guided cooking rather than having to follow the old piece of paper. So you press start. Takes a second and then you just arrow through. It tells you what to do. And when it comes time to add your ingredients, you press the scales button. It tells you what to add. And then you go out of it and then you press the function button. It tells you what to do. So we're chopping that for three seconds. Um, and then you just keep going through. So it's so easy, step by step, can't really go wrong. You know, now we're adding veggies. So it tells you what to add all along the way. It's really so easy. Um, just great that you can have, you know, your old family favorite recipes or your favorite recipes from the community now in Cookie Do as guided cooking recipes on your screen. Um, yeah, so what have I covered? <laughs> I wanna, I'm trying to end so that you can all get back to your days, but I feel like I just wanna recap. So we've shown you a, a lot of the features of the TM6. We've gone through most of the modes. Um, we do have, tomorrow when I send the recording, I'll send out a link that is to other recordings of other classes we've put on in the past. So you can see other things like, We've done classes where we show the sous vide and the slow cook and um, egg boiler and different. We just show different things each time. We can't show everything in one class, but um, yeah, you can look at those. If you want further information about a Thermomix, please reach out to your consultant. If you don't have a consultant, let me know and I can find one local to you or one who meets your, um, you know, kind of type of cooking. Um, but yeah. Does anyone have any questions? Um, that's really... The other great thing about being on a live class is that your particular questions can be answered live. So if anyone has any, please feel free to put them in the chat or come off mute and ask me. Um, otherwise, that really is the end of our class. And I hope you've learned something or got something out of it and enjoyed it. I've enjoyed cooking and my kids are excited to eat pizza. <laughs> Thanks, Kelly. Oh yes, Ray, you love the hot chocolate too. Yeah, hot chocolate's good with frothed milk. Um, yeah, and I'll end the recording in case anyone wants to jump off mute asking any questions. So where's that button? Cool. Thanks, everyone.